has three key modules, plan, scope, and flow. You don't have to use the whole app. Some teams start with a plan module to standardize execution plans and contracts. Some focus on minimizing their risk using the visual scoping module. Some like to print the pull planning cards so they can run lean design management workflows. You can grow into the other integrated modules whenever you're ready. First thing you'll want to do is complete your profile so that others know who you are and how to get in touch. Your account memberships will show up in this list. By default, you'll see your own account and an example account with an example project. More on this later. From this project dashboard area, creating a project is easy. We can type anything. Here we're going to type in a name. We can also choose from the pick lists. And simply hitting the create button will create us a project. Here we can add the project location, making sure that when we hit the save button, it saves that location precisely as well. We can add a project image if you have one. This is all common information about the project and some standard things that we found on many projects. We can close up the section and then start to add plan sections to our plan. These could come from plan sections we've created on projects we're associated with or from the community. And then we can simply scroll through the list and click on to see what they are. And we can like them so that we can find them in the future and select them or we can search and find individual sections that we would like to add. Here we've searched for BIM goals, BIM uses. We can also search here coordination, finding exactly the sections that we would like to inside of these projects. And also a signature block. And or we can select the add at the top and that will select all of them, going to the second page and being able to select more. So you can imagine there you're bringing in your standards from a template project. There it was just an example project, but very quickly we have built all of the plan sections that can now be edited for this project specifically. Clicking on a section takes you to that location. So here we've got software versions. Each section is built up with rich information and clicking the edit pencil takes us into the what you see is what you get mode. So this is showing us exactly the form that will be printed in the export of the PDF. Clicking on images brings up toolbars specific for images. Clicking on text, the same. Being able to alter this and then save it for this project specifically. And then when we're done editing, we can click on the check mark in the top right corner to save our changes and it will return to take advantage of the full screen on the web browser. Next, we can start to add our own plan sections. We're able to select what type of plan section it is, give it a name, and then also add a description. And this description will turn up as the tooltip in the top corner when you hover over the icon. You probably have standards already that you can copy and paste from. So here we can copy and paste the text and we can also copy and paste tables. So grabbing the whole table and pasting it in so that we've got everything that we need from our existing standards. Placing the cursor in an empty row brings up the menu at the left hand side to make it quick to insert. Or we can go to the insert menu at the top and insert everything from files as we're doing here by dragging and dropping an attachment and we can also insert photos and videos and process maps and surveys and slideshows one of the key things that we look to do was make life easier so reordering sections is now simply a drag and drop and that will reorder and renumber the sections so that you can click to go straight to that section an exciting part of having a web-based plan is that you can embed things like a process map or the photographs or images or a survey or a video or even an as-built survey. A couple of warnings in using these, it can slow the experience for the user and obviously they will not print. A huge part of a web-based plan is that you can add teammates to help you either create or review the content. 
we can add a logo and a color for each team. And as we add teams, we are defining the name, the role, the abbreviation, and that color that will be displayed as we assign certain scope for that team. As we add team members, we can either add them with viewer, editor, or manager permissions. More on the help center to take a look at exactly what they would be allowed. But on your free account, you can add as many of any of them as you like. By clicking on the contact card, you can also change their permissions. As you develop your plan, you might like to gather comments from your teammates and collaborators. Everybody, even viewers, can add their comments. And as you add your comments, you can add emojis. And by hitting enter, this comment is then saved in the log with the timestamp. As we go through that workflow, we can also submit and also approve and freeze those sections and those are logged as part of that running commentary. Let's move on to the scope. Hitting the add milestones button, we can add them individually or from templates. So here we can choose a template from the industry or from a previous project. By checking the box and clicking add, we get the list of those in, but we can remove them if we are not necessarily using all of them. We can rename them and we can define date ranges for each of them. Milestones could be time-based, like phases or stages. They could be deliverable-based, concept model, production, handover. They could be BIM use-based, like energy analysis or coordination or FM, or a combination of these. The second step is to add our scope packages. They, again, could be from my scope that I've created, from projects I'm associated with, or from the global tab. Here on the projects tab, we have the example project, and we are going to bring in the example plumbing scope. We bring in two systems, and the grid now can be populated by clicking the Add button. Every time you click the Add button, you're adding scope at that milestone for that system, and it's being incremented at an LOD, so you can see the number in the top corner, and you can see the image is changing, but we'll get more to that into the details in a second. Editing this scope package brings up the modal to be able to select more or less of that scope. We can search here, searching for PIP pipes and being able to select other systems. In this example, we are going to select the fire. Let's select the fire suppression. And now this will be added to that scope as a third system. On the right hand side of your screen, there's a tools menu. Very important. There are three buttons there. This one accesses the assignment mode, so we can choose both the LOD and also the team, click some cells, and then remember to click the assign, and that will assign that combination to that milestone for those systems that you choose. So changing the LOD, changing the team, and now we can assign those requirements at that milestone. Very quick, very easy to make those assignments in bulk as well. Another really important feature is the ability to turn on and off the element level. So turning on the element level reveals underneath this system all of the elements that make up that system. We can go across from left to right, selecting what we would like. We can also go up and down each of the milestones to define what we would like. Here, what we're really doing is for that system at that milestone, defining exactly which elements are required. This is key and this provides the flexibility that everybody has been screaming for in the industry. The ability to, at that specific point in time, say whether I am or not modeling something. And whether it's a clearance or whether it's reinforcement, it's critical to be able to specify and to be at that detail rather than be held to a specific requirement that you cannot change. In this example, for 500 being an as-built, we also have the LOA, the level of accuracy scale, and we're going to choose two elements, assign the team, and then we are going to assign specific information requirements, so level of information requirements for the domestic water system as well. Inside of the tank, 
we can click the plus button to add a requirement and search for the requirements in the database. Again, a very familiar interface. We can create our own, but if there's an already created warranty parameter that we would like to add to these elements, we can simply go through, check the boxes and hit add, and you can see them now in the list. If you've added information requirements, it will be shown with a flag at the element level as well. We don't have to add them one by one. There's also an information assignment mode where we can select from the toolbar and then select the items that we would like to add. Click the add button and then we can multi-select many of the elements at the same time. Hit the assign button and those will be added to those elements. Let's finish this scope package by making sure that every piece of scope has a team assigned. And this way we can also see the model handover. Here we can see it transitioning from the architect to the plumber and to the contractor to add the final FM requirements. Just like in the plan, all of these scopes are reusable. We can pull in a scope from a previous project from your templates. This one comes in as a foundation scope and you can see that transition very similar as a bell shaped curve. More and more of that data is required to get to coordinated documentation, but maybe less is required at handover. Okay, let's take a look at the flow. Someone recently described the flow page as the part that takes away the number one excuse in our industry. All of the agreements or the contract requirements from the scope page are automatically translated to tasks that we can filter. Here we're going to filter for the construction milestone and we can hit the print button to print out rich pull planning cards. If you're following a lean design management process, these will be essential to get that kick started. No more blank looks on people's faces as they sit there with blank sticky notes. These are rich cards already with the assignment, the image, the detail that's required in order to be able to run that pull planning session very efficiently. If you've had that fun pull planning session, you can assign the cards to individuals and we can drag them around on the screen to update progress. Simply putting checklists into the cards, we can add attachments and links, we can define specific dates. Really, really flexible environment to keep that plan on track and to keep everyone up to date. Kanban board is completely flexible as well. We can define our columns on the fly. To remember, we've got the plan with plan sections that can come from your templates. You can collaborate on them, approve them. We move on to the flow. Each of these scope packages can be edited, can be updated, also templatized and brought in from your standards. Each of those areas is connected as well. You can add information requirements, you can add responsibilities. And then in the flow, all of your cards are filtered and easy to print as a flow card set there. From all of this rich data, we can print a document. We can check as many pieces of that document, open the settings, create a cover page, rich information showing whether it's an image, tables, text, etc. We can automate that maximizing of the image. Cover pages are saved. This is a header that we're entering. Left, center, and right information that can also have images. So here we're adding a logo, for example, and now we'll see that logo in the header. When we hit print, it prints and it saves in the archive so you always have a record of that document at that point in time. Clean and crisp reporting, whether it's a contract document, whether it's an addendum with a scope, or if it's the flow cards to enable you to have a lean design management workflow. There you have it, three integrated modules. Don't feel that you have to use all of them. We're here to help. There's a help center and also reach out to the team in the chat in the bottom right hand corner of your screen.